Hello, I'm Stoic Dan, and today's topic is women in philosophy. Here with me is Annalisa Jarvis Hansen from Copenhagen. She's an artist and a philosopher, and welcome. Thank you. So let's begin first. Um, one of the famous women in philosophy was Diotima. Yes. Tell us a little bit about her. Diotima was the instructress for Socrates. He has written about, no, I will say, Plato has written about Socrates, about his divine love, a theory of, of his philosophy. And then uh, Socrates says that he was intro, 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 introduced or instructed by a woman philosopher called Diotima, a wise woman. Mm. And um, that was the, ba the, the, ba the basic of uh, Socrates philosophy and uh, in symposium in symposium yes right very good and I think the and year I think her flourishing point was about 440 BC yes something about yeah. that right so yes and uh, there is now uh, there is uh, um, a society of philosopher I have been a member of in in, uh, in Athens and um, they and uh, they and also within the women philosophy association in germany and america are uh, writing about her and uh, have her as a, one of the major women philosophers mm -hmm. and actually the first woman philosopher in the western in the western history of philosophy mm -hmm. very good so now let's move forward in time to the 1600s we have uh, the name of Gabriella Souchon. Yes, I Souchon? found yes, I found her um, uh, uh, in my studies at the University of Copenhagen, where I went in to study philosophy after I, I, I after I studied art history, and I'm an artist and I educated for Los Angeles mm -hmm. Art Association. Um, uh, anyway, uh, so uh, we were looking we were looking for more women philosophers listed. And um, now there are, there are many books about women philosophers. And then we found, um, I found a Gabriella, suddenly, a French philosopher. And her theme was to, to introduce the concept of the persona instead of the concept of gender, of he or she. Uh, and, uh, uh, and she wrote about that, and she got stuck in the, the way that I interpreted. She got stuck with the language, the French language, and many European languages are based on gender. And um, he and she and it, we divide our language. And uh, this is a chair, is a he, or a table is a she, and uh, how they, we, they have developed our language since the. Since the, since the ancient times, since actually back all to the Egyptian times and the Greek times. And um, so she has introduced a new, a new uh, concept in the 16th century. And she has been forgotten for many, many years. And now we, we, she's been analyzed. She was also a, a writer and a poet. Right. Well, it, it is fascinating uh, that that these, uh, these great minds have been forgotten simply because they were women, I think, and now they're being rediscovered. I know recently I gave a lecture on Margaret Fuller. Well, the reason they were forgotten yeah. is that Aristoteles said that women have no brains in his writings. And ever since Aristoteles was writing the, uh, his philosophy, and it has been dominated, and then the, the, uh, the, the, the Christian philosophy after the Greek philosophy have kept women uh, as um, as a uh, as not an intelligent person, mm. and we also like to uh, discuss uh, the get rid of the concept that Adam, that Eve was created out of Adam's rib. Uh. So we uh, we these are in our way of looking at these little fantasies, little too fantasyful, mm. and this is what this century now the women have been really well educated. They have not been able to go to college or to universities for more than 100, 100 years. Mm -hmm. So we're a little behind after, what, 2,500 years of the, our brothers and father, our brothers going to, mm -hmm. to get educated in universities. Mm -hmm. But that's another topic we can talk right. about. Yeah? Well, so hopefully, uh, not just this video, but um, 
looking for other videos, other articles on the internet, people can rediscover these women in philosophy. Yes. I know the one that I'm helping promote is Margaret Fuller, uh, who was an American transcendentalist yeah. in the 1800s. She started, she edited the magazine called The Dial, which Emerson and Thoreau, they were all published in, but their names are mostly for remembered, not hers. Yeah. So we need to work on that. Well, I would like to add one more new thing that we are doing in the last 20 years is go global. Not only started the Western world philosophy, from the Egyptians to the, to the Greek and to the French and to the German and to Heidegger and uh, up to now, but also started philosophy or thinkings in other cultures, old other old cultures like the Indian culture and the, the Chinese culture, which are as old as the Western culture. It's all uh, the, the written words, the written thoughts were written down about six or seven hundred BC mm. in these different parts of these three big um, uh, cultures. Mm -hmm. And also we are looking, we are looking global. And also we, now we are looking at the, the, uh, the philosophy or the mindset of the uh, uh, Inca Indian, Indians. So no, no, not only can base your thinking about or your, or your focus on the Western philosophy. That's a very good point. Um, earlier we were talking about the Indo-Aryan culture yeah. and the Hindus. I think the Hindus, their major period was 1500 to 500 BC. Yeah. Then 500 starts Buddha. Yeah. Then 300 BC starts Stoicism yeah. uh, in Greece. Yes. So it, it is quite a progression. Yes, and especially nowadays when we can fly to the moon and look at, down upon the planet Earth. And uh, the, the common thing that we are saying that it's for every human being is that we all have to eat and we all have to sleep and we all have to love living on planet Earth. Because without planet Earth, we wouldn't be here. So no matter what kind of religious concept you put up in the universe, um, it is we have to treasure planet Earth. So now let's turn and talk about your uh, exploration of art uh, and, and your travels with David. Uh, talk a, a little bit about the places you went. Well, uh, yes. Well, there's so many places. Uh, been, um, I have been uh, a traveler all over America, and I lived here many years with David. And then I, I have traveled. Uh, I have got in New, when, I, when we lived in New York, the Danish embassy contacted me to, for me to represent Denmark in the first world a women's conference in Mexico City. So I did with my art. I, ha I have a bachelor's degree of fine arts from Los Angeles at the Art Center College of Design. And I started with one of the very, very famous, uh, in that area, artist Lars of Eidelson. Mm. And we started the world, the world art history. And of course the world art history go before the written word. So we have studied generally what have humans been, been doing all over the world in portraying their lives. Mm. And, um, and so I said, well, I have to know the people that are living on this planet, and I always love to travel. So we had one of the big uh, uh, trips we took was in 95 from Copenhagen to Beijing to the Second World, Conf to the Second world Conference on Women that China was just opening up. Mm. Um, and then we have been, uh, uh, the, and then uh, the first one I went to in 1980 when the second World Conference on Women was in Copenhagen. And I became the cultural coordinator on that. And then since then I have been associated with, the, uh, working with an NGO with the United Nations at uh, Department of Public Information and we founded um, an NGO called Cultural Information and Coordination for Everybody, for Happy Peace for Everybody. Mm. So we're looking at a positive, a positive in life, the, what is good in life on this planet Earth. Mm. And I heard you're planning a future trip to Australia? Yes, I'm planning, I have been most part, I have been to Asia, I've been to South America, I've been, to, I've been sailing on the uh, Amazon River, and I have been um, trailing on the Nile River, and I've been traveling north in North Africa and all over Europe. So now I am, uh, I, I, and, and last fall I went to the Himalayas, 
to the tiny state of Bhutan. Mm -hmm. So I said, I have to see how people live around the place, around the planet where we all live, mm -hmm. to, for me to understand the many beautiful, various culture and religions we have created ever since we have developed ourselves into societies and cultures. One of the beautiful, beautiful concepts that you shared with me was the Hindu idea of two souls. Yeah. Do you remember, how, how does that work again? Uh, well, the, the two souls is, uh, is the way that you are, you are uh, living an everyday life. And uh, you are living uh, with your eyes open and you act if, uh, in accordance to whatever that, and then you sleep. Mm. And then you think. Then you can, t then when you are, you have eaten and you have slept and you are f feeling good, do you wonder what, what, where am I? What is, what is this life on planet Earth? And then your mind wanders, or your mind expands into all kinds of concepts. And nowadays we can, we can believe in UFOs and we can be sending people to the moon. And, and that is our human ability to be so creative in our mental capacity but you still have to have your feet on the ground and wake up every morning and, and feed yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's the contrast between the, the uh, unstage and off stage. Off stage is where you really have to support yourself through, through your whole life from your born to your die. And, uh, and, the un, and the on stage is discussed with other human beings on the planet. How, how do we live? How do we fantasize? and how can we explore and in the science. So I have started uh, follow the history of science, the history of world religions, and I accept any way that we can perceive living. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't prefer one to the other. I just think it's a fantastic variation of creativity. Mm -hmm. Well, very interesting conversation. I thank you so much. And we're going to give a homework assignment to anyone who's watching. The Society for Women in Philosophy? Yes. Yeah, I encourage all of you to look that up on the internet. There's a growing organization. They, we have uh, an organization uh, in, in Germany and, and also in America. And uh, there's also an organization of women in philosophy. Um, in, 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 in other parts of the world, I think they also have it in, in Japan now with the, with the Buddhism. So, the, uh, so the, the, the word philosophy is not just um, the, uh, the European concept of philosophy. It's, it's, con it's, it's, a, it's a imagination and philosophy. So it's both metaphysical and it's physical and it's non-physical whatever how we categorize philosophy within. But the women have been kept all over the planet, all over the planet have been kept away from higher knowledge, from educating themselves. They have been too busy, have been kept busy feeding, uh, giving birth to babies. Mm. And that's actually one of the United Nations goals for education and empowerment yeah, of yeah, women yeah. is equal education yeah. and quality education. Yeah. And uh, we have it very well developed in our Western world. And now we have to help other countries and other societies to open up for equality and, mm. and, uh, and uh, uh, that we have the same opportunity in, in, in our lives, all of us, all over where we live. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing so, so many good ideas with us, Annalisa. Thank you very and, much for, for inviting me. Yeah. And so uh, in the description for this video, we'll put some links that you can uh, find that uh, International uh, Women's uh, Philosophy Society. Yeah, just Google on it and you will women philosophy in all, in all the world's languages. Mm -hmm. That's also another thing. I mean, they ask, in the art and the art everybody can read and understand when you when you paint a tree or you paint a, an image but you, we, we, we the written word we have to speak we have to learn what 175 different languages to understand mm. our our text mm -hmm. so that's one benefit from the visual arts to express our peace or our whatever concept we we want to express visually mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us.